All right, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this wonderful uh, Wednesday night. Wednesday night, goodness, already halfway through the work week. October 25th, we got Halloween coming upon us very, very soon. The uh, Let's see, what is it? Uh, about 10.33 p.m. here, October 25th, 2023, latest earthquake activity. Shows a 2.9, also a 1.0. Where's that 2.9 at? Looks like it's hiding somewhere out here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Uh, we'll get to it. Oh, it looks like down into the South America region here in the red flag. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in here to the West Coast where we're seeing a little bit of earthquake activity scattered up here around the ranch, or down here from me anyway, the Rancho Cucamonga area. Not a huge amount of earthquake activity, but a little uptick here across this area of the plate boundary and south here into the northern edge of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. The uh, rest of the San Andreas Fault continues to sleep, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, moving up north here, uh, some spotty activity across the Ridgecrest area and also up and down the uh, west coast for as the uh, Santa Lucia mountain range goes. Generally microquake activity. And also around the Long Valley Supervolcano, a couple smaller earthquakes here throughout the last 24 hours. Nothing major going on. And this activity generally outside the Long Valley uh, Caldera region. Bay Area fairly quiet. That is the Clear Lake volcanic field that you're seeing here on the map. Generally, uh, this is average for earthquake activity. There's a whole process involved in that uh, earthquake activity. I'll let you guys be the guests there and uh, looking that up. Calpine Hydrothermal Operations. Mount St. Helens, still seeing some earthquake activity here. Don't know what's going on. Uh, I guess I guess we have to wait and see what Mount St. Helens wants to do. We haven't really seen any major unusual activity in terms of gas emissions or inflation data, just earthquake activity. And there's been uh, quite a few earthquakes out here across the Mount St. Helens area in the past couple months. A little bit of movement here uh, across Mount Rainier as well. One little earthquake right smack dab at the summit area with a little 0.4. All right, uh, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on here. But as usual, let's double check that and make sure. We do have some snow going on up there. Uh, and some cold, cold temperatures stretching into Montana and Wyoming. Single digits or probably below uh, for some overnight lows up there. Goodness, uh, a little taste of winter. And I'm enjoying it here in Northern California myself. We've got some cooler temperatures. As far as earthquake activity goes here across Wyoming, pretty quiet. Uh, Yellowstone National Park uh, remains, you know, quiet for now. Uh, areas across the eastern portion of the country, a handful of earthquakes out here scattered out and about over a broad area. We're talking about areas from the oil fields out here in western Texas to up in Illinois area where we've seen uh, a little earthquake earlier this evening, uh, 2.5, 20 kilometers deep outside of, it looks like, what is that? Pana? Pana area? Don't see too many earthquakes up there, but it does sit generally north of the New Madrid seismic zone. This area can see some earthquakes, so it's, you know, not out of the norm to see some earthquake activity up there. Just for now, uh, generally small microquake activity. Looking at the rest of the model out here, what do we got for the largest magnitudes here in the last 24 hours? Well, that's going to be a 5.4 down here along the Kermadec Trench, New Zealand area. 5.4, 38 kilometers deep. But aside from that, uh, generally uh, a couple low-grade fives here over the last 24 hours scattered mostly here across the area of the Indonesia Islands area and uh, some movement around the Solomon Islands area as well. That's going to be the largest magnitudes Really not seeing anything abnormal going on out here far as the world view goes. New Zealand looks like they got a small amount of earthquake activity there. Uh, so you know what, let's just, we've got to double check that, right? We always try to cover New Zealand here on the earthquake update. And it's, uh, it's an area of interest, that's for sure. 3.0 uh, North Island here about three hours ago. Aside from that, a uh, couple earthquakes there from yesterday. Really not seeing any major earthquake activity there across New Zealand for now. Uh, I believe that's going to be the Kermadec Trench earthquake. Let's see here. Uh, 
not seeing the uh, Kermadec Islands area up here on the earthquake drums. Let's see. But I believe that's what that is. I think we have to go to the uh, volcanic drums here real quick to check that out. Kermadec Islands. There we go. A little bit of activity stirring up there, as you can see, within the last few hours across the Kermadec Islands. Uh, but for the most part, uh, all volcanoes locally there across New Zealand, uh, pretty quiet for now. Uh, Himalayas, what do we got up here? It's a movement off the plate boundary. A couple earthquakes from earlier this morning into China. In the uh, Tajikistan, Tajikistan area, no major movement going on there. A little bit of activity across Cyprus area from late last night. This is just about ready to drop off the 24-hour threshold there. And uh, some movement well into the uh, Gulf of Aden area. Looks like a 4.4 earlier this afternoon. Uh, divergent boundary activity out there across the Red Sea. Separation of the seafloor, so to speak. Let's see if we got anything major going on here on the Earthquake 3D globe. There's a 3.6 uh, coming in to just south of the Philippines, it looks like. The Japan area, fairly quiet. Not a whole lot going on here for now. Um, let's see what else we have here. Mediterranean, for the most part, generally small microquake activity. Iceland has calmed down as far as earthquake activity goes up there. We did see a handful of earthquakes down in the South Sandwich Trench earlier uh, this morning into the South America region. Uh, some threes and twos and fours out there across the area of Chile. You can see that there on the USGS map as well, although just one earthquake showing up here. Uh, from the USGS, fairly deep, but there's definitely a handful of earthquakes not showing up there on that graph. Uh, the big island of Hawaii, let's see what's going on out here. Uh, still seeing a little bit of earthquake activity out here south of the Kilauea volcano, so let's double check, see what we have. For the latest data here across the Kilauea volcano, any inflation going on out here across the area? That's a uh, key to uh, volcanic activity. Well, check this out. As expected, and I've mentioned this here over the past three or four updates, as far as the trends go, we were expecting this. Look at the um, 24, or the, that's the uh, past two days. This is the past 30 days of activity. I've chatted about this. We'll get the inflation going on, deflation for a day, two, or maybe two days or so. Inflation. Uh, last deflation event here over the past couple days. Now we're returning back to inflation. Now, whether that goes up above the previous inflation chart, um, we'll have to watch that. I think it will. Uh, if it doesn't, I'll be surprised, but we're definitely noticing that inflation trend going on. And it's, uh, it kicks up every, oh, I don't know, every two days or so. As far as that, well... The inflation lasts for about two days. Uh, uh, deflation, excuse me. Deflation event happens every two days, followed up by inflation. And you can see it right here on this map. It's pretty easy to read. Um, so there's definitely some variances here going on uh, with terms of influx of magma below. And it looks like it's got a cycle. Whether well, it's got to do with the moon, a gravitational pull from the moon, maybe it's got something to do with... Um, who knows what, but there's definitely a trend going on here across the area of Kilauea Volcano. So we'll continue to watch that as far as the uh, volcanic activity goes there across the region of Kilauea Volcano. Um, solar weather activity, we're currently looking at, well, a little decline in activity uh, for the most part. Uh, we're not seeing anything major going on. I do want to show you guys something real quick, and I have to, um, I still got the viewer count up there. All right, that'll work. I have to go over here real quick, and I'm going to bring something up to show you guys here real quick, because it's very interesting, and I think it's noteworthy to uh, uh, pay attention to. Stand by for just a second here while I pull up things. I meant to have it uh, up here on the screen, but uh, it's just been kind of busy here. In terms of uh, activity here on this end. So I'm going to go and bring this back up now. So stand by. Um, we are looking at the information here put out by uh, the NOAA website here. 
and they have made a pretty rare adjustment in terms of the solar cycle 25 prediction so now these guys you know they've uh they've pretty much adjusted the previous cycle remember you guys remember the previous cycle here and i can show you here on the sunspot or at least on the solar ham site um pending they haven't updated it let me check here real quick and see oh, no, this is still the old solar cycle prediction right peaking out sometime around 2025 june and then dropping back down well that is no longer in effect we are talking about a peak out in between january 2024 to october 2024 and then dying down after that so all this previous activity we've seen this year the heightened activity is pretty much the peak that we should have seen um but far as the um this prediction goes these guys underestimated uh the solar cycle but it looks like we will be peaking out early next year so literally a year and a half earlier than uh, what they had originally predicted and same for the sfi so it's it's uh it's rather interesting here right i would say for folks like that to make a uh an adjustment here to a solar cycle it's very rare uh, but NOAA again predicts solar activity will increase more quickly and peak at a higher level than previously predicted. Solar cycle 25 is expected to peak between January of this coming year, 2024, uh, to October 2024. So literally a year earlier than what had uh, been forecasted. So not for sure what's going on with that, but it's a little rare to see that uh change in the forecast far as the solar flare activity currently goes well we're still fairly calm not a whole lot of movement going on 20 percent chance for a sea flare goodness and everything else yeah you can pretty much not even count on any of that less than one percent for all those categories and it's it's been a very interesting few days here we went from fairly active conditions to nothing uh, ever since I posted that video or uh, article about the uh, magnetic fields up here across the northern and so southern hemisphere of the sun uh, flipping, that has a huge play in what goes on here across the solar sunspot areas. And um, how it's going to recover, that's going to be a very interesting um, event to see what happens. But right now, we don't have a whole lot of flaring going on and not a whole lot of major sunspots that are facing us the ones that are facing us are dying down as we speak they are pretty much uh non-existent and fading away fading kind of like the wind just fading away like the wind uh we do have a couple sunspots around the eastern limb of the sun but they are not looking promising at all in terms of complexity goodness so it's a rather interesting turn of events here uh, as we head into solar maximum 25 it's been a rather active year you know far as the sunspot number goes we've been well above the former prediction number but now uh these guys are stating that we're going to peak out here in january uh or maybe in between january and october of 2024 and after that we go back into solar minimum so it's rather interesting um coronal hole activity while we do have a little bit of activity stretching up here 65 and 66 uh is this the latest updated image it is it's kind of slowly stretching across this area been waiting on this for a couple days to get into position but it's a it's been taking its time here um so once these are into position these corona holes we should expect some elevated activity here uh to the three-day geomagnetic forecast maybe some g1 class storms in the future pending these coronal holes hold up but uh yeah i it, it's crazy to think that uh these guys have completely revised the solar cycle here 25 the new prediction cycle here they're kind of you know fixing i don't know it's kind of 
I really can't put my um, my finger on it. Why they would, you know, unless they trying to fix their mistakes, you know, maybe because these guys uh, thought that the predicted number would be much lower than peak out in 2025, but it's been really strong up until you know the past week or so, and we've just gone downhill. So maybe that was a peak, and now we're going downhill. Who knows, but it will be uh, very interesting to see how this plays out in terms of the sunspot uh, activity here. The sun, you know, it, it, can we predict it 100%? Absolutely not, but these guys were way off. Uh, and now they're kind of fixing their mistakes here and uh, stating that 2024 will be the solar peak. January In between January and October. All right, let's see what else we got here for Storm Prediction Center. Not a whole lot of severe weather going on the next couple days, as you can see here on the map. Uh, we are dealing with some cooler weather out here in the West Coast, which is awesome to me. There's our low-pressure system uh, hanging out here across Oregon. 49 degrees here in Northern California right now. That's fine by me. If I had it my way, I'd be blowing the windows open and uh, letting all the cold air in, but Miss Mimi's... <laughs> She don't like the cold, so I, I, I don't know. I'd rather have the cold, but we'll we'll shoot for neutral ground, I guess. Uh, so 49 degrees outside. We're expecting around 43 or so. Definitely some colder temperatures coming in here to the west coast and snow flying up there in the mountains. Um, that is expected to hang around here for the majority of the week and into the weekend. We do have high pressure system building up here. Generally across the uh, Alaska and Canada region, but not making a huge influx uh, of weather changes here across the West Coast. So that's fine by me. Um, but far as any major pattern changes here, um, I'm not really seeing anything significant going on here across the West Coast. No major high pressure system, which is good news uh, for the West Coast area. All right, folks, I uh, think I'm going to jump off here and uh, call it a night. A little bit of activity stirring up here across the area of the plate boundary off the Port Alexander area. We haven't checked the Cascadia Tribber here. Let's see what we got going on. I completely forget to check that sometimes. And it, nothing going on, zero. And normally you can tell when it's bumping because we see activity elevated inland uh, into areas uh, away from the plate boundary along the west coast, but that hasn't been active. So zero epicenters the past week. Well, there you go. Kind of had that, that hunch there that there was really no tremor going on just by looking at the earthquake activity. So no tremor going on here. Uh, minimal pressure gradients out here for now across the West Coast area. Uh, I think for now, uh, for the most part, um, well, you know, Take your pick. Where could be an interesting uh, area to see? Over the past 30 days or so, this shows us where uh, a lot of the earthquake activity has been and where it hasn't been. New Zealand, you're still up there. You are still right there in the area that has a seismic gap. And that is not the area to be in because that definitely means that it's building up out here across this area. Uh, also, we haven't really seen a whole lot of movement further north here. Uh, into the Andaman Sea area or up into the Myanmar region. So some of these areas could fill in. I still think New Zealand needs to catch up here. And, um, you know, these general areas have a high seismic historical um, uh, uptick, so to speak, here that, that should take place across this area following lots of movement around the plate boundary, but it just hasn't across the New Zealand area. And uh, kind of waiting on that. I think we'll see that fill in here soon. All right, folks, I am going to jump off here. As far as the live seismograph stations go, let's double check and see what we got. Pretty calm out there. A little spike of an earthquake there across Yellowstone. But really, uh, things look pretty calm across the global seismograph stations. We'll catch you guys back out here sometime tomorrow, Thursday. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys later.